and we're back with Mike Mullins, designer of Bottom of the Ninth and Pentacore. Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Sensibility. Ability to receive sensations. Sensitiveness. Peculiar susceptibility to a pleasurable or pain impression as from a praise or slight often used in plural. And we'll stop right there because I know you went with to feel, right? (laughs) Well, no, I, well, sort of, uh, so yeah, I cheated. I, um, well, it's not cheating, right? The whole idea is that it takes you where it may take you. So when I first started thinking about sensibilities, I, I, I tend to think of like sense and sensibility and I get this picture of like, I was going to pitch you 11 Z's and, you know, people <laughs> and some fine dining and whatever. Um, and I started thinking about some of those things and, and I think I even, we chatted briefly about, you know, the ability to sense things and, I even talked about the show Sensei and like some weird like sensing things in other people's bodies, angles. Um, but I ended up on something that's much um, much more tame, I guess. So the Latin root is sensibilis, which is just um, – it's an adjective that's ability to be perceived. So something that you can sense, okay, um, which is similar. But the idea that, that it made me think of was um, a tile laying game or some sort of card placement, whatever particular vehicle that it ends up being in, where um, the face-up part of the stack is what you're eventually going to place, right? Um, but the face-down side has a certain feature that you just don't know right off the bat. Okay. So you can sense, you know, you know that this is, oh, this is a forest, and if I connect it with my forest, it's worth these points or whatever, right? Um, but what you don't know is there's some imperceptible things, and they could have elements so you could be trying to connect elements like oh well, this is actually a dark forest or this is a um you know a weird temporal forest or you know any kind of weird thing on the back right so there are certain things in the game that allow you to either peek at the underside you know maybe you have uh gadgets that allow you to somehow sense what's on the bottom of a stack so i'm thinking maybe you have you know the stack and then you know like a lot of games you have uh three uh tiles that are out there for drafting or purchase or whatever happens to be right so some abilities would just be a peak so it's like okay i know that if i draft this i can draft this into my you know my connection of dark uh tiles so this will bonus you know boost my dark points that i normally wouldn't have or there's some things that allow you to flip them over and so then end game scoring is based on what you can see and you're actually assembling so you know whether it's adjacency rules or you know, there's, there's a million different ways yeah. to, to score tile laying things like, oh, you know, unique tiles or blah, blah, blah. So you have those face up. Uh, so there's, there's one round of scoring, but then you also reveal any tiles that are still face down and score again based on the, uh, you know, the more ethereal qualities that you couldn't sense when they were face down. So it's like, okay, well, I've also completed, you know, I have more dark than you have light. So there's 10 points. And I have, you know, whatever it happens to be. And, and so if you, you know, you can certainly put a ton of your efforts into just not even worrying about the things that you can't sense and trying to just amass a ton of points and maybe get lucky with the points on the bottom side. Or you could use abilities that allow you to spy the bottom of the deck or flip them up early. And, you know, some things could take effect if they were already revealed before the, the second, before the flip reveal, right? You know, there's that compulsory reveal between the first round of scoring and the second. Um, so that was my my framework of how this would work, would be a hidden information tile laying game where whether it's additional cards or, you know, the face-up sides of the tiles. Maybe you draft a tile that doesn't score, but once per round allows you to peek at an opponent's face down something or, you know, whatever happens to be. So that there's something neat where you had me thinking about you said that the deck is it's face up when you start the cards are all face up and the the backs have the extra hidden information are there is there anything where you're doing the inverse where you start with like a map and you're going back to a deck where like the face up matters or i don't it just made me think of something that i don't think i know about which was just an and not like reverse map building game but something where you build the stack as opposed to build the map 
Right. Well, that's that's awesome. Uh, that's one of those things that's awesome conceptually, but the problem with it is it's also a reverse game flow. So normally, like you're making a creative you, decision, and well, right. So as you as you start, your decisions branch, right? Whereas if you're reversing, if you're taking stuff off the map and building the stack, then your decisions are all coming to a single point. And so yeah. by the end of the game, you're not making. I mean, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a middle ground somewhere. I think the closest that, I could think of is like deck building, where it's not a map, but it's a, a collection of cards that are out. You eventually build sure. them into your stack and then use them. Yeah, absolutely. The only difference being uh, is that you can't in any way. It's like a store window. It's not a map. You can't in any way interact with. No, exactly. The cards. So, but I like the idea that because um, you could certainly engineer it to where the game doesn't end when the map is gone. Like you don't have to actually build the stack, right? You have to. You're exploiting yeah. part of the map so you're taking half of it away by the time the game is over or it could even be that you're taking things from a communal map and putting it into your own stack and then from from the stack you could then I don't know, a weird version of drafting where um, you're exploring the world you draft from the world into your own stack and then you got to put them back out somehow yeah um, just, just to avoid that weird point in time where it's like we're and done. I'll take the last tile and put it on top of this. You know what I mean? Like you start yeah. to wind down the. No, it's, it needs to have another aspect to it. Right. So, um, the drawbacks of this particular design are that there are just so many of those type of games. I'm not saying there's not room for more tile layers. But oh, like, it's definitely popular. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like a, you know, there's almost no matter how creative I try to get, like, okay, well, these must all be in a line. Aha. You know, well, that's in this game, this, 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 and this. Okay, well, they must all be unique. Oh, well, that's in these 12 games. You know, like, yeah, trying there's... to think of new ways to, to lay tiles and have it be compelling is, is one thing. It's kind of like, it's first of all, it's just the design space is so tight now, but it's one of those things where, like, you looked at deck building years ago and said, it, it's cool when it's part of a game, but if it's the entire game, we've been there and, and had ones that are great. So now it's just like you want it to be an aspect of tiling. It's just part of a larger thing. Right. Well, so then, so let's then take what you said. You use the word map. So we're not just making a territory. We are physically exploring this map. So yeah. the other thing we'll add to it is actual exploration and that's how you reveal the bottom side of tiles. That's cool, yeah. And so, and so maybe as I'm moving around, like, I've explored too many, uh, too many tiles that are counter to my personal energy. And so now, like, I can't get out of this section without help. And so I have to spend something to get out of this area that I back myself into a corner. Or, um, you know, the things that we can't sense are actually... Uh, monsters or things like that so like if i wander into a territory then you can play a card from your hand that affects me but only if it's on the right tile which you wouldn't know unless you'd already peaked or you know so if we combine the yeah the act of something just being physically not able to be seen because it's on the back of the tile with our characters in play being the ones that have to figure it out that could add something different to the whole tiling thing i had um I didn't have much about this. I basically tried to... I, my first idea, what I told you, was the actual sensations between between other players. Things you can see here and things like that. And I always right. like to play around with things like that. But it's also... It gets into that sort of... It's not the same as dexterity, but it's close. Like the, It's almost party game-ish. Or, yeah. Well, like there's like a... Design. design the mouth guard game where it's like, I can't quite hear you. <laughs> yeah. Or design that. They're just out there, you know? But uh, the other idea I had was just from a thematic side was just making things that are not um, living to to have some sort of sensation and senses. And I thought of it as, you know, thinking of like you've got this, this, let's just go with a map. And then there's this tree here and that tree can hear. And what does that do and what does that mean and how does that change games and how is that different than I just had a person there that could hear you know, just right. like that is my ear. But if I build this tree out here, it does tree things and also <laughs> human things. Like I, 
I'm, what are you doing over there? I was just doing some tree things. <laughs> I'm growing. I'm sprouting. I, my leaves are falling off. But no, I just thought about that in 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 both in in um, territory types as well as just straight like inanimate objects and things like that. Like this oh, sure. can hear, well, this can this is your eye, but it's also something else. Oh, absolutely. And, and when you think about, you know, the the action being imbuing something with a power is kind of fun, right? So yeah. it's like, all right, well, I've explored this territory and I and you know, if I look at the icons, it says there's a waterfall, there's some rocks and it's a tree. Um, and I'm gonna give the tree my hearing. So then whenever you cross here um, I, I get to know where your character is cause I can hear it or something, you know, if there's like a hidden movement part to it, or I'm going to install eyes on these rocks. So you got to show me one of your cards whenever you cross this thing. Like now the, you know. the part that's crazy about it and where I take this to a really dumb level is when I give <laughs> my sight or my hearing to that, I personally lose it. So it, it affects me as a player <laughs> while I'm playing. Um, I have to close my eyes or cover my ears or it affects my character <laughs> can't do that because i've given it to this tree right um you know it's terrible but you never know <laughs> it's terrible but well i mean there's different ways to approach it so you know uh if you give your eyes away so you can see your opponent's hand then yeah exactly you can no longer look at one of your cards in your hand or something like that or you know you don't have, your opponent doesn't see you don't flip it around like an obby, but you if you have a hand of five cards one of them has to be face down yeah you've got times. a random that you can absolutely yeah. So here is have it. yeah here is just you know players get to do another action that you don't get i mean that's kind of like c as well but they do something that you don't see here here is a yeah. tricky one i went i went with like footprint footprints but it could also be some sort of any other kind of communication yeah um yeah and of course you, you know you wander into to tricky territory anytime you're, you're pitching something like this with with already accessibility issues or it's like because you don't want to make yeah. Losing your sight be a penalty, right? Because it's not you can't treat it like that. But no, yeah. I we had that exact thing in the game Hot Dogs. Is every time you you win a round, you get a something that makes the next round harder. And yeah. I don't remember what we called them, and it wasn't a disability, but it was something along those lines. And one of the people that played it was just like, "Well, these are all me playing normally." <laughs> and it was very like right. in a very playful way the way that he he said it, but it was just sure. like oh yeah that's that's not nice you know I don't <laughs> that's not the intent yeah and it's and it's but it's forward thinking to recognize that and not be halfway down the, the yeah bike and oh say, this was already published at the point <laughs> you know right right <laughs> yeah well I guess he likes to spin around during uh, card games <laughs> yeah I think it was most of them were spin around close your eyes. But I forget what we called them. It wasn't like a debilitation or something along those lines. But it was close enough that it was just it, it could be harsh. So right, right, something right. Something to live and learn. Well, that's the important thing is to learn, I suppose. There we we just wandered way off into. <laughs> hey, into we were things. being sensible. Um, tell everyone where they can find you and catch up with At your stuff. Blue Devil Duke on Twitter is the easiest way. It is the only way today. So. Yeah. The only way today. Well, true enough. I <laughs> ignore right. everything else. Yeah. Or and if you don't at message you, you might ignore that too. I I or do. I'm in my... <laughs> That's right. My love hate relationship with Twitter. So if I don't if I don't if I don't get some special attention there, I probably won't notice it. I'll get the occasional email from you that says I'm off Twitter. <laughs> uh, you know, be back in two weeks. Well, I take little holidays. Like I like when we go to the lake house or whatever. It's like, you know, because we talk on Twitter so often that. It, well, we didn't slack more often, but yeah. yeah, it's nice to take a break once in a while. Yeah, I need one of them. All right, cool. We will do this again. Uh, Sounds we good, won't. man. Thanks this for was the last on. one, so we'll do it again next time. Next time. <laughs> All right. All right. Take it easy.